Cool. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Hugh Mitchell, and you're listening to a coming of age movie. What's up, everyone? I'm Kira. And I'm Julia. Welcome or welcome back to a coming of age movie. This week, we're super excited to be joined by Hugh Mitchell. You may know him from his photography or as Colin Creevy from Harry Potter. Hugh, what's up? How are you? Hey, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Very tired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, interesting story. I think we should just get it out now. We're very tired because we're participating in a, like a show, a, a theater production right now. And the show is Puffs. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it oh. is a Harry Potter parody. Wow. And, okay. <laughs> and Colin Creevy is a character. So, Amazing. Okay. So yeah, oh, great. Brilliant. Okay. So is that kind of everybody playing different characters kind of thing and like multiple characters? How, how, does, that, how does that work? It's basically Harry Potter from the point of view of the Hufflepuffs. So it's like, okay. every, you know, the unimportant characters kind of, and they're kind mm-hmm. of in the background. Oh, Hufflepuffs. I mean, they yeah. just, you know, poor guys. Yeah, I think I think this is needed for the Hufflepuffs. I think this is, this is, this is a gap in the market. I agree. And then Colin comes on and just takes pictures and annoys everyone. And it's really, it's great. It is need the worst. I mean, the way <laughs> he does that, he's like, he's like the paparazzi. I mean, yeah. Uh, cool. All right. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Nice one. I'm Thank sure you. So we're, we're very tired, but yeah. Yes. Okay. So jump, yeah, I do. Let me answer some questions. How did you first become interested in photography and all of that? Mm, yeah. So I kind of, it's, I suppose it's one of those things that's difficult to kind of pin to a specific, um, you know, event or something. Um, I mean, my dad's been very into photography. Um, so maybe I kind of picked up a little bit from that. Um, I got a I got a camera when I was like a kid. I think I won, I won, I won a, a camera in a competition. Um, and you know, when you're a kid, that's like the most exciting thing uh, in the world. Um, so I kind of had fun with that. And then, but I didn't really get serious about it. I see serious about it. It kind of started being a, more of a hobby, kind of um, 2015, something like that. Um, and I started kind of following these YouTubers. Um, it's kind of like landscape photographers. So you got like Thomas Heaton and Simon Baxter, who were both quite sort of, um, I'd say sort of prolific landscape photographers in, um, in the UK. Um, and yeah, I just kind of started following them, started kind of playing around with photography myself, just going out and shooting, you know, I mean, terrible photos. I look at the photos that I was taking then and I kind of <clears throat> chuckle because I sort of thought they were good and they're actually terrible. But um, yeah, I kind of got into that and then I did a workshop with them. We went off to the Lake District um, and had like, just a, this amazing week in the Lake District. Um, and just kind of got hooked on landscape photography. Um, and then I kind of started doing that a bit more and, um, you know, putting putting photos out online and stuff. And people kind of started saying, you know, oh, you you do photography, you could shoot like my wedding or you could do a headshot or something. So I was like, okay, yeah, sure. That's, that's you know, that's um, an easy transition when in fact it's actually like a completely, um, completely different ball game. But, um, but I started getting into that and then, uh, yeah, just started, started doing it professionally so um so yeah that's kind of it in a nutshell I think <laughs> <laughs> that's very cool um so what was your first paid photography job do you remember um it was a I did a commission for um one of the London borough councils um they just I know it sounds so exciting doesn't it um I, they just wanted some they wanted some photos for their kind of new uh developments and new projects and kind of just um you know photos from around the area so like yeah i got to go around um and do a bunch of sort of street photography and that kind of thing and i think yeah so that was that was really probably my first one um and it's nerve-wracking you know because you sort of this thing that you do as a hobby and then suddenly kind of you're starting to do it professionally and you've got kind of pressure um yeah. And you start doubting yourself. You think, "Oh God, it's all terrible." I need to sit, but um, but yeah, it seemed seemed to work out. Um, so yeah, that was probably the first one I did. And I know you said you started out with like landscape, but do you have a favorite type of photography to do, or like a favorite photo you've ever taken? Like, if that is possible. Mm, um, I, it probably is landscapes. Like, I, I, it's something. There's something about landscape photography. I, it sounds incredibly cheesy, but um, it's um, Thomas Eaton says this thing where he's like you know landscape photography is about more than just photography and it's it's um it's yeah it does sound a bit kind of yeah a little bit cheesy but there is a there is a kind of therapeutic element to it um and just you know just kind of getting out in nature and kind of 
observing things in a slightly different way than you than you would if you were just kind of going for a walk and kind of I don't know um yeah I hesitate to say kind of connecting with nature that, that cliche but it's it's true and it kind of um yeah it, it is a it is a, a, a great thing um favorite photo I really I really don't know um it's probably one of the ones that's kind of on my website or something in my portfolio probably one of those like probably a maybe a, like a panorama of like the Oxendale Valley in the Lake District, something like that. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think yeah, probably lands probably landscapes for me. But I mean, all all sorts of, of photography have their kind of um, you know their kind of enjoyable elements of them. I mean, wedding photography obviously it's completely completely different sort of subject wise, but it's so rewarding when you get to send someone some you know send send a client like photos of kind of such an important day to them and they and they love them and they kind of you know cherish them and you kind of think they're probably you know going to have those photos up on their wall for the rest of their lives so that's that's a really cool element about um yeah wedding photography when actually when I started out and I sort of thought about you know wedding photography I thought oh no maybe it's going to be too high pressure or it's going to be like um but that all kind of yeah there's a there's a rewarding rewarding element to that um so yeah <laughs> that's awesome that's very cool. It's 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 like so interesting to know that you can have like such like a huge impact on people's lives just like through all of that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a double-edged sword to that because obviously if you mess it up, then it's kind of, <laughs> you know, it's kind of uh you can't you can't go again and be like, yeah, uh so my memory card failed. So can we just uh just do that all again, just book everybody in, get all your relatives, you know, um yeah. try to try to look like it's you know, like it's not the second time you've done it. Um right yeah that's it okay so switching gears a little bit do you find it ironic that your most known acting performance is as Colin Creevy who's a photographer and now photography is your career mm, yeah I, ha I have noticed that um <laughs> that connection um yeah not the first person to ask about that um I I don't know what maybe there was like a subliminal subconscious kind of thing that was planted in my brain you know I got I picked up the camera on set and something clicked and I was like, yes, I'll, I'll do this. Uh, I'll, I'll do this many years later as a profession, but um, I don't think so. I think it's just a, a fun kind of coincidence. I think, um, I don't know, maybe just a camera feels right in my hands. Um, <laughs> and I don't know, who knows? Um, but yeah, there was, there was a little bit of an irony to it. Um, hopefully I'm not too much like Colin um, <laughs> in the sense that I don't go around kind of, you know, um, putting cameras in people's faces when they don't want it and uh you know unsolicited kind of uh crazy uh yeah harassment I think is kind of what what Colin Cree <laughs> kind of falls under so hopefully there's, there's none of that um but uh yeah there is there is a bit of an irony to that maybe you're just like a really intense method actor that's it yeah, yeah. that was my it was my plan all along all yeah. I need to do is just get a part in a movie where I'm playing a photographer and then Many years later, I'll, I'll, I'll know what I'm doing um, when I pick up a camera. <laughs> Take notes, guys. <laughs> so how did you first get into acting? How old were you and how did that start? Yeah, so um, I mean, Harry Potter was the kind of first first thing that, that I did acting wise. I mean, I did plays at school, um, I suppose, but I wasn't like, you know, big into drama or anything like that. Um, I think my, my parents would tell you that my first role was as the reluctant sheep in a school play. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it was probably a nativity play and I was apparently just dragged onto stage um, crying. Um, so whether that counts as my first actor role, I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, Harry Potter really. Um, and I was 11 years old, something like that, 11, 11 going on 12. Um, and I was just responding, I just responded to a, it was a, an advert that came up, it was a fax, which um, sort of tells you how long ago that was. Um, so they faxed it to my school, um, put it up on the notice board and it was like, you know, we're auditioning for the second Harry Potter film. And I think at this point, the first one hadn't come out or maybe had only just come out. Um, no, no, I think I think it hadn't come out. Um, and um, but Harry Potter was was already like a big thing. And, you know, it was the book that everyone was reading. And um, yeah, me and a few kind of school friends just kind of thought it would be a laugh, I suppose, to just, um, you know, reply and, you know, what have you got to lose? And, um, and uh, yeah, to our surprise, a bunch of us got um, auditions. So we went and auditioned um, in London. And um, I think it was like 
several months after that that I got the next audition. So I'd sort of written it off and thought, you know, oh, you know, what a shame, but that was that was fun, whatever. Um, yeah, like several months went by, got a second audition, I got a third audition, and it was like, okay, this is getting a bit serious. Um, this could actually be something more than just a, you know, a, a, a joke. Um, and uh, and then yeah, so, so so then got that got that part and um, kind of went from there. Got got my agent after that um, in London again, and uh, yeah, just kind of went from there, I guess. Yeah. That's like such a thing that you hear. It's like, just like, oh yeah, there was like an open casting call or whatever and I just went for it and then it happened. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I could easily have just been like, nah, I don't know. Probably won't get it, whatever. Um, and yeah, things would have been very different. Um, <laughs> but uh, take, yeah. take every opportunity you have because then. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. So who were some of your early inspirations, both in film and photography? Ooh, um, both in film, did you say? Or... Yeah, like film, like acting. Like acting, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, man. I mean, the thing about Harry Potter is that we were on set with, like, sort of English acting royalty, pretty much. Um, you know, you've got Maggie Smith and Alan Rickman and um, Richard Harris and Robbie Coltrane. So all those all those guys were, were really fun to, fun to work with. Um, Robbie Coltrane especially, um, he was just kind of probably as you would expect him to be, just kind of constantly cracking jokes um, to the point where it was even like possibly a bit disruptive because we were all kind of, you know, <laughs> chuckling away. Um, so, you know, I mean, all of, all of those guys were sort of super, super inspiring. Um, but, but at the same time, you know, their kind of um, acting heritage, I suppose, was sort of lost on a lot of us younger kids because... It was mainly our parents who were like, you know, knew that it was a big deal that we were on set with these people, but we were just on set, you know, for, from our point of view, we were just on set with these fun older actors who were really great at acting, but also really fun to kind of um, be around on set. And I think that's probably a, a big, actually a big part of what they do is not just what they do once the cameras start rolling, but it's it's how you are in all those times in between um, and how easy you are to get on with and how you kind of make people feel at ease um and Chris Columbus the director he was really good with that as well um so yeah so all those guys were, were cool um and then photography wise I think well yes yeah, so I've already I've already mentioned um yeah Thomas Heaton Simon Baxter but um a, a lot of these guys who are, who are just you know I, I say ordinary people you know not not particularly kind of um I don't know there's, there's nothing particularly about them other than other than the fact that you know they started off um again as a hobby doing photography and um and kind of started started youtube channels or wrote books or whatever so you've got like nigel danson um Barry T. milligan um in the u.s you've got ben horn he's a he's a great um sort of film photographer um so yeah all these guys are sort of in, inspiring their own their own ways i suppose um and that's kind of a big that's a big plus you know people kind of talk about social media being this kind of maybe we spend too much time on it and maybe it can be a bit toxic at times or maybe it can be a force of bad but I think there's also a lot of great things that come out of social media and that you can you know you can look at this great work every day by people that are putting it out for free um and get inspiration that way so uh, so yeah yeah and do you have any cool or fun behind the scenes stories that you'd like to share Oh, okay. Um, well, I mean, there was a lot of there was a lot of weird stuff that went on. I'll be honest. Um, it was just, <laughs> I, I don't mean that in any kind of sinister way. Um, <laughs> just you know, you would just find us. You know, I think there was. A, a, I mean, my, my first day on set was just me by myself in front of a <clears throat> in front of a green screen with an entire second unit film crew, um, and I was just having to kind of stand around and. Um, look at tennis balls on sticks and pretend that it was Harry on a broomstick and there was a there was a giant wind machine that was like the size of like a, you know lorry and I was so small that they had to actually kind of there was a guy it was like a stunt guy who had to hold my angles down so that I wasn't blown away by the wind machine it was just all these like weird just weird kind of moments where you're kind of thinking at times is this like a super strange dream or is this just how and this this just yeah this just kind of situations you find yourself in on a on a film set um yeah I remember getting spat on by Daniel Radcliffe that was that was quite fun um I say spat on um 
yeah, this is the problem. Like these are, are sound bites of, of yeah, dangerous. Um, but um, yeah, so there was a scene where he was in the hospital wing and he was drinking Skelligro, or like the potion that regrows his bones, and he has to spit it out. And on the first take, I was standing kind of directly opposite at the end of his bed, and I just kind of got this tidal wave of um, mm. uh, of spit. So they had to kind of cover the camera in like plastic sheeting, and there's all these weird things that go on. Um, but yeah, I, to be honest, every, every day on that set was kind of memorable and bizarre and amazing. So um, yeah, yeah, too many, too many to, to think of. When he's when you said that he like spit on you, I wasn't sure if that was like a British mm -hmm. thing that meant something else or right. if he literally <laughs> spit on you. I was like, hmm. Yeah, yeah, he just he just spit on me, you know, as as we do, um, as we do in the UK. You know, it's just it's just a friendly greeting, you know. <laughs> no, I, thought, I thought maybe it meant something. Like, <laughs> I thought maybe it meant something like, oh, he like, I don't know, joked with me or something. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, some no, kind he of spit on you. <laughs> he it could easily be some some weird. Um, British slang, but no, as far as far as I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any other aspects of entertainment that you'd like to work in? Oh, um, I don't know. I think I keep a pretty open mind these days about kind of what I go into. I mean, I might not be, I might be kind of do, working in a different sort of um, field of photography in, in 10 years to what I'm doing now. Um, you know, I'd be cool to work in commercial photography and I mean, I know, I know absolutely nothing about fashion, but it, I often think it'd be quite cool to work on, on fashion shoots just because of how kind of, you can do some pretty creative, wacky stuff, that kind of thing. Um, and there were some pretty cool, cool fashion photographers out there as well. Um, and then, yeah, entertainment industry wise, I mean, I'm into my music, um, but you know, that's just kind of something that I'll probably be more kind of, uh, more kind of into as a, as, as a listener than a, than a creator, I suppose. But um, but uh, yeah, I don't know, all sorts. I feel like everything in the entertainment industry is pretty fluid where you can kind of, you know, mess yeah. around with different things pretty easily. So that's always nice to keep an open mind. That's it, yeah, yeah. And I think kind of there are kinds of people out there who are just not necessarily saying that I'm one of them, but there, there are people out there who are just creative and they'll just latch on to, you know, a, a new thing and that's cool. and. Um, you know, and try out all, all sorts of different stuff. So yeah, there's a lot of um, kind of overlap, I think, yeah. yeah. And do you have any advice for people trying to get started in the entertainment industry? Um, I, I think my advice, I mean, I, I hesitate to give like advice from an expert, um, but I would say that a lot of the, to be honest, the advice I would give is probably stuff that people have heard before, which is, you know, to just, keep an open mind and go out and, and kind of seize opportunities where they arise and don't worry about the fact that, you know, it might not work out because that's, that's always going to be the case. And I think the kind of people who kind of find a lot of success in, um, you know, the entertainment industry are, are people who don't really, uh, who aren't, who aren't put off by that, you know, whether you're a writer that's getting loads of rejections from publishers or an actor that's you know going to loads of auditions and getting rejections like that's it's almost like that's part of it and if you can kind of accept that then you will probably fare better than if you than if you kind of you know throw your arms up at the first hurdle or the 10th hurdle or the 100th hurdle um so i think I, yeah persistence i suppose um persistence and you know open-mindedness is always is always good and also kind of to you know it kind of foster your own creativity if that doesn't sound too kind of vague um because i think everybody has something to offer that's unique to them um and so to not worry too much about copying people that's that's another thing that happens a lot on social media is that you know people will see something and they'll see a trend and they'll latch onto it and they'll recreate it or they they see a photographer and then they go oh i want you know i want images like that photographer or they see a you know, an actor and they say, oh, I want to be doing the kind of thing that that, that, that actor is doing. But obviously everybody's unique. So they can always, you know, someone can always bring something new um, and to, yeah, to not be too afraid of that and to actually, yeah, embrace that, embrace your, embrace your individuality is what I would say. Embrace your individual, in, oh my God, I cannot say that, individuality. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, so switching it up again, uh, how do you spend your free time? Like, do you have any favorite hobbies you want to talk about? um 
I mean, I spend a lot, it sounds really dull, but I spend so much of my free time walking my dog. Um, I love dogs, so that, so yeah, I probably spend as much time with dogs as I can. Um, yeah, what else do I do? Yeah, I mean, all the usual stuff really, you know, I watch a lot of, I watch a lot of movies. I like, I like a good, I like a good movie. I like going to the cinema. Um, I like going to gigs, you know, I say I like going to gigs. It's been ages since I've been to a gig, but I'm going to a gig tomorrow, um, which is probably the first time in like, well, since pre-pandemic um so yeah um I don't know all sorts really I suppose yeah just getting out I mean photography is kind of what I would have previously said in any time you know in terms of what I do in my free time and now it's a little bit more like um a little bit more like a job but I still do it as a hobby so um yeah that's probably that's probably the main thing well it's great that you can do it like as a hobby but also kind of you know like get some money and <laughs> yeah that's it yeah but there's it's I think it's kind of um yeah there's a there's a different approach to doing like a, you know a professional job than yeah. to just obviously going out going out with uh, with my camera and I and I think it can't really when I am going out and just you know shooting a landscape wherever I'm not I'm never thinking like oh how can I monetize this <laughs> you know because um, that would that would quickly ruin it I think um so I kind of I do sort of keep those keep those separate I suppose yeah, yeah that's good <laughs> Have you had any uh, memorable or interesting fan experiences? Oh man, um, you know, I think on the whole, you know, fans. That I've met, I mean, I hesitate to use the word fan, but I suppose yeah, I have met fans because I've done done conventions and stuff. You know, where I'm meeting fans all day, and that's that's it's always really cool. You know, everyone's everyone's always nice. I think people kind of think you know, oh, are there are there are there any kind of super weird people out there, and I guess there are, but. I, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's just, it's just really cool, really cool people. And, you know, it's, it's cool. I get to meet, you know, I get to go to conventions kind of around in different countries and, you know, meet people from all over the place and talk to people from, you know, like you guys, you know, um, from New York or, you know, or, or wherever. So, um, so it's always, it's always cool to get to, to get to meet, meet fans, I suppose. Um, yeah, it's always nice. Awesome. And I know we, we mentioned it a little bit earlier, but so you are our first ever British guest on this podcast, which is like amazing. Cool. Um, nice. <laughs> we have a little bit of a weird question for you. What would you okay. think is like the most British thing about yourself? Like the most, the biggest difference between like British people versus American people, like something like that. Yeah. There are, there are genuine differences. It's, it's funny, like when you kind of yeah see the see the differences but there there are there are definitely uh, kind of cultural differences i suppose there is the british um propensity to apologize for things and i think i probably do that a lot like if someone bumps into me i will say sorry even if it's 100% their fault um <laughs> and i think that's just a, that's that's probably quite a is that a british i don't know do you guys do that do you find that or if someone kind of does something rubs you up the wrong way do you, are you kind of um are you more I feel like you know uh, uh, people from from the US are a little bit more kind of I don't know unapologetic is that sort of, <laughs> it's kind of, sort of well that? Julia definitely apologizes a lot that's just a Julia yeah, thing that's okay, just a me thing. Just you. But. Right. <laughs> but no I know you, like like we're from like around like New York City and like if, if you bump into someone in New York City you're not getting an apology like no right. way they could okay, they could sure. like push you into a puddle you are not getting an apology <laughs> no, I had a, I, right. I like bumped into a Spider-Man one time and he like he yelled at me they ask so, you for money uh, like okay. yeah sure, sure. yeah yeah that's probably a pretty big difference like th the cities are probably a lot you're probably a lot nicer there in new york city you have to fend for your life mm, yeah i mean there's, there's a little bit of that in london but i think um that's probably just because london's a bit more of a kind of a, you know global kind of um it's more of a kind of global population whereas yeah you go to like a small town in the uk there's there's a lot of apologizing going on everyone's just wandering around apologizing to each other that's basically <laughs> I can just imagine that. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> and um, how did like the pandemic affect your career? Like as a photographer, how did that change what you did and how did that affect like your life in general? I think I got out a lot on my own doing doing photography, which was which was really nice. And it was quite a good kind of um, like a, I sort of alluded to earlier, like a quite a nice therapy for that. Um, obviously, like I wasn't really quite as kind of, um, you know, I was kind of more you know, in the kind of early stages of kind of thinking about photography as a, as, as a career, I suppose. I think it's really only been since the pandemic's ended that I've kind of got more serious about 
um, you know, doing it, doing it on the professional side. So I was probably really lucky in that sense because obviously there were photographers out there who I don't know how they, I don't know how they did it, you know, wedding photographers or headshot photographers, or they just couldn't work for like a year or two years. So, um, yeah, that's, it was definitely, um, I was, it was, I mean, it was a weird time for everyone, wasn't it? Um, but, um, yeah, it definitely, definitely had, it, had its challenges, but, but also, you know, it's, it's that, you know, if you're someone who enjoys going out, you know, on your own to a, to a misty woodland and doing lots of photography, then that's kind of quite a nice way to spend your, spend your time if you're, you know, at the time when we were even allowed to do that, um, you know, it was like my exercise for the day or whatever, what, you know, however it was, however it was allowed. Um, so yeah, it was a nice, it was a nice thing to do, um, to also not get like cabin fever, you know, from being shut indoors the whole time. Um, and it's a nice excuse to go out even when, you know, the weather's not great or it's kind of raining or you wouldn't think to just go out and wander around by yourself, you know, if you weren't, <laughs> if you weren't going out, you know, with photography in mind. Um, so yeah. That's cool that you can have like, like a creative outlet that you can also just like, I don't know you just like you like it so much that's like right there for you yeah exactly yeah yeah I think it's I think it's important to kind of keep keep doing these things you know it's kind of um and not kind of yeah lose lose touch of that that side of things yeah. and do you have any future plans or goals that you can share with us um really I just I just want to keep on keep on doing doing doing, doing what I'm doing really and um seeing where kind of photography takes me and um you know there's places that I'd love to go to um I've got kind of places on my my bucket list to travel to you know to do more landscape photography um so that'd be cool I'd love to go I'd love to go to Iceland because I've never been to Iceland um so that's kind of I don't know on my on my list um but then but then yeah goals goals wise I think yeah just just keep on doing what I'm doing and kind of um yeah see where it see where it takes me and maybe find maybe find a bit more of a niche in photography possibly um because I'm you know I'm doing a lot of kind of different different things photography wise at the moment so maybe find kind of a real a real niche and become really kind of um just get really good at that <laughs> I think would be would be cool mm -hmm. yeah so well Hugh thanks so much for coming on we had such a great time thank you yeah yeah thanks very much guys yeah I enjoyed it so cheers if anyone wants to follow you online where can they do that um, so I've got Instagram, which is just at Hugh Mitchell Photography, or I've got another Instagram account, which is at Hugh Mitchell Portraits. And so the photography one's for my landscapes, the portraits one is for my headshots and weddings and that kind of thing. Um, and I've just got a website, hughmitchell.co.uk. Um, so yeah, thanks for the opportunity for that plug. <laughs> and to anybody listening at home, you can follow our Instagram, which is the same as our TikTok, which is at acoam.podcast. And our Twitter is at acoam underscore podcast. Follow us there to keep up and hear about more awesome guests like you. We love the shameless plugs on both ends. <laughs> <It'll be done. laughs> and, yeah, thank you all so much for tuning in. As always, we'll see you next week on a coming of age movie.